now we can see how the couples climb aboard to start the journey for their honeymoon and their journey of life together all down the line fresh couples climbed aboard the rest stood round the last confetti and advice were thrown and as we moved each face seemed to define just what it saw departing children frowned at something dull fathers had never known success so huge and holy farcical the women shared the secret like a happy funeral while girls gripping their handbags tighter stared at a religious wounding so the poet notices that fresh couples climbed aboard and as the couple are right now in the train who is left at the platform the rest of the people the fathers the mothers the uncles the friends the girls they stood there in the platform waving goodbye the last confetti and advice were thrown so confetti is the colored glitter paper that is thrown for parties like weddings the confetti and advice both are equated together the last confetti was thrown so was the last advice thrown to the couple climbing the train and as we moved now you can see that uh, the narrator has transferred from i to v as we moved okay in the first hand side you can see that the train was empty the pass the cabin was empty and he was the only person in it so he started the journey as i and now with a lot of people inside the cabin you can see that he has transferred the voice from i to we and as we moved each face seemed to define just what it saw departing uh so each of the faces the trains departing from children fathers women girls children their face seemed to be frowning at something really dull and uninteresting now fathers they look like they have achieved a success so huge and so farcical the women talk to each other as if they are sharing a secret like a happy funeral and girls you can see they are gripping their handbags tighter as if they are looking at a religious wounding so we need to analyze each of these in detail the farce the happy funeral and the religious wounding are three references that he makes to the idea of wedding the skeptical attitude of the poet can be seen in how he reduces the idea of wedding to a farce okay the expression of the fathers is that of achieving a huge success by sending off their children after marriage is like a success a farcical process what about the women the women are as if they are attending a funeral only that the funeral here is a happy one and then the girls they are gripping their handbags tighter as if they are really nervous and scared as if they are looking at something uh, like a bloody wound only that it is a religious wounding because it is the ceremony of wedding in context so all these three references to the farce to the happy funeral and the religious wounding reduces the ceremony of wedding to um, something painful something farcical again you can see alliteration in abundance fathers farcical funeral success secret girls gripping like likewise 
to continue the train journey starts from the particular station free at last and loaded with the sum of all they sow we hurried towards london shuffling gouts of steam now fields were building plots and poplars cast long shadows over major roads and for some 50 minutes that in time would seem just long enough to settle hats and say i nearly died a dozen marriages got under way okay so now the couple are free from the advices from uh, the people who are encroaching the privacy of the newly married uh, bride and groom so now free at last and carrying the memories of all that they were undergoing and all that they were seeing at the platform now all of the passengers including the fresh couple we all hurry towards london so the destination is london and now again fields were building plots meaning fields uh, the countryside has now given way to a township and the shadows have become longer meaning it is now evening and major roads are appearing so for around 50 minutes the poet says that it is just time to settle hats okay you settle hats and you leave bidding goodbye to people but i would say i nearly died a dozen marriages got underway so by the time it was 50 minutes uh, it was just a time to settle one's hats but a dozen marriages okay around 12 married couple came into the train from various stations and i should say i nearly died okay i nearly died probably because of laughter because he is having this skepticism towards uh, marriages or i nearly died of boredom or i nearly died of embarrassment he does not clarify the poet does not clarify how he feels died but anyway he says i nearly died again the paraphernalia that you see from a train journey is explained they watched the landscape sitting side by side an odeon went past a cooling tower and someone running up to bowl and none thought of the others who ne- who would the others they would never meet or how their lives would all contain this hour okay so what is there outside as uh, the scenery there are buildings uh, there are cooling towers there are people who are playing uh, some something like cricket uh, where somebody is uh, running up to bowl and at this point none thought of the others they would never meet again okay a train journey is a special one because we meet so many people we sit with so many people for long hours but probably never again in our life we are going to meet these people any any more or how their lives would all contain this hour nobody is going to think how they are all living this particular hour together even though they are strangers i thought of london spread out in the sun its postal districts packed like squares of wheat there we were aimed so as the poem nears the end the final stanza he says that he thinks of london and london is now spread out in the sun uh, meaning um, you can imagine the shadows the long shadows cast over the districts of london and the postal districts are packed like squares of wheat meaning the thickly populated city of london and there we were aimed so that is our destination we were aimed to london and as we raced across bright knots of rail past standing pullmans walls of blackened moss came close and it was nearly done this frail traveling coincidence and what it held stood ready to be loosed with all the power that being changed can give so as we reached our destination across bright knots of rail past standing pullmans so pullmans are luxury railway cars so probably the final destination the last railway station has uh, approached and we are getting ready to get down it was nearly done 
this frail traveling coincidence it was nearly done this traveling coincidence is finished the traveling coincidence is the journey the train uh, the train journey and what it held stood ready to be loosed with all the power that being changed can give so the people who have been there in the train are now ready to change from motion to achieving the aim of their journey these lines can also be seen as an erotic image where the fresh couple who are aiming for a honeymoon and uh, longing to reach london are full of energy which full of libido or full of sexual energy that needs to be loosed once they reach their destination we slowed again and as the tightened brakes took hold there swelled a sense of falling like an arrow shower sent out of sight somewhere becoming rain so as the train journey ends as the trains brakes started taking hold uh, somewhere clouds uh, came together and uh, it rained now again this is an erotic image where the people uh, particularly the couple who are aiming the honeymoon they are preparing for an arrow shower so the arrow shower it could mean the cupid's arrow or it could even uh, mean the real uh, process of sex itself like an arrow shower sent out of sight somewhere becoming rain so at the end the poet realizes the role of marriage okay the images of fertility here uh, shows the consummation of marriage as the perpetuation or continuity of human race so that is how the poem wits and weddings end okay the uh, reference to the wedding as a religious wounding or a happy funeral or farcical comes to a romantic notion of an arrow shower somewhere becoming rain um, the arrow of mars okay or the arrow of cupid Uh, whichever arrow it may refer to but that brings the romantic image of the rain the showers of rain uh, or rather the perpetuation of human race that is the ultimate realization of marriage uh, and that skeptical attitude that the poet previously had now consummates into a romantic idea so in short if we look at the poem uh, we can see that there is both um, a celebration of marriage uh, as seen from the people standing on the platform they are there enjoying the wedding ceremony and the afterwards what all celebrations they do the confetti and uh, bidding goodbye to the f- a couple and the couple uh, sen- setting off for their honeymoon that part is mentioned at the same time it is juxtaposed with the poet's perspective the skeptical attitude of the poet towards wedding so in the end it consummates into a romantic image which the poet has a neutral perspective about also the enigmatic and ambiguous nature of the fragmented images in the poem and the overall tone of the poem makes it a complex one that needs careful examination to unravel the various overtones